In this presentation, a 3-3 C2.1 fracture will be treated with the LCP distal femur plate, or DF, using the Less Invasive Stabilization System, or LIS for short. The objectives of this presentation are to identify the clinical indications for the distal femur plate, to show the surgical approach and the correct reduction of the fracture, and to correctly apply the plate using the LIS insertion guide. The LCP distal femur plates are intended to buttress multifragmentary distal femur fractures, including supracondylar fractures, intraarticular fractures, periprosthetic fractures, non-unions and malunions, osteotomies of the distal femur, and distal shaft fractures. To help in the reduction of distal femur fractures, the knee should be placed in flexion in order to relieve the tension of the gastrocnemius muscle. The positioning must allow radiological examination in both planes. This can be achieved either by raising the other leg so that the injured leg can be approached from the side, or if possible, by lowering the other leg from the hip. In the presence of a complex intraarticular fracture, a 3-3-C2 or C3 fracture, a lateral parapetellar approach is made. An arthrotomy is performed to expose the joint for reduction. The patella is everted and the incision is extended for adequate exposure of the joint for anatomical reduction and fixation. The soft tissue is held open with the spreader. The large pointed reduction forceps is used to reduce the joint block. The reduction of the joint block is first secured with two centrally placed K-wires. It is important to use two K-wires to ensure rotational stability. To compress the joint block, two or three screws are placed from lateral to medial along the periphery of the articular surface. This leaves a free zone of bone for the placement of the plate. These screws may be 3.5 mm fully threaded lag screws, 6.5 mm partially threaded lag screws, or 4.0, 4.5 mm cannulated partially threaded lag screws. For this exercise, two 6.5 mm cancellous bone screws with a 32 mm long thread are used. The screw hole is pre-drilled with the 3.2 mm drill bit parallel to the level of the ventral condyle. The depth gauge is used to measure the screw length. The threads are cut with the 6.5 mm tap. The appropriate length 6.5 mm cancellous bone screw is inserted. For older persons with bad quality bone, a washer can be added. A second 6.5 mm cancellous bone screw is inserted in the same manner to ensure rotational stability. The two K wires are now removed from the joint block. The medial fragment is reduced to the shaft using the pointed reduction forceps in order to make a good reduction to the joint block. A K wire is inserted percutaneously to secure the reduction of the medial fragment. The joint block is reduced to the shaft and held in place with a K-wire. It is important to have a good reduction before the LCP DF plate is applied. A second K-wire is used to ensure rotational stability.
The main component and the radiolucent extension of the distal femur lis insertion guide are assembled. The nut on the extension is tightened, first by hand and then with the pin wrench. The insertion guide is fitted onto the distal end of the LCP DF plate by means of a three point fastening. The fixation bolt is passed through the central hole, A, of the insertion guide, down to the plate. The connection is stabilized by tightening the nut of the fixation bolt, first by hand and then with the pin wrench. The scissors is used to create a tunnel beneath the vastus lateralis. The plate can now be slid through the parapatellar approach under the vastus lateralis muscle and along the femur. It is important to move the plate up and down slightly while inserting it. These movements are important to ensure that the plate stays on the bone and does not injure the soft tissues. It should be emphasized that the plate is aligned to the oblique lateral condyle of the femur due to the trapezoid shape of the distal femur in the axial plane. An anterior gap between the plate and the bone must be avoided. This would cause pain to the patient as the tractus iliotibialis is irritated. This gap is created if the surgeon tries to position the plate in an orthograde fashion and does not orient the plate to the bone surface. The plate is fixed distally using a K-wire through the fixation bolt. The insertion guide should now be stabilized further proximally with a K-wire. The insertion sleeve and trocar are slid through the insertion guide to mark the position of the stab incision on the skin. The incision is made down to the plate with a scalpel. In a clinical situation, scissors without sharp ends are always used, so the muscles can be spread in a blunt fashion. Here the position of the plate is checked using a finger. The correct position is decisive for good stability of the plate to the bone. The insertion sleeve trocar combination is inserted down to the bone and tightened in place using the nut. The trocar is removed and replaced with a stabilization bolt which is screwed into the plate hole. A 2 mm K wire is now introduced. At this stage, both the position of the plate and the fracture reduction are checked under image intensification. A pull reduction instrument will be inserted through hole 5 to stabilize the bone against the plate. A stab incision is made and the insertion sleeve introduced in the usual manner. The pull reduction device is inserted monocortically with a power tool, although in osteoporotic bone it should be used bicortically. The nut is taken away to allow the insertion sleeve to be removed. The nut is then put back. To fix the distance between the shaft of the femur and the plate, the nut is tightened down to the insertion guide, first by hand and then with a pin wrench. The first screw is placed in the distal femur. An insertion sleeve and fixation bolt are slid through hole E and the fixation bolt is screwed into the plate hole. The 4.3 mm calibrated drill bit is needed to prepare the screw hole. During drilling, the collar slides up the drill. The depth of the hole can be read from the position of the collar. 
In this case, an 80 millimeter long screw is required. The fixation bolt is removed. The corresponding 5 mm locking screw is inserted using the 3.5 mm hexagonal screwdriver shaft. The shoulder of the hexagonal screwdriver shaft indicates the depth of screw insertion. When the upper shoulder is flush with the end of the insertion sleeve, the screw head is flush with the plate. Power insertion should be stopped before the screw locks into the plate. The screwdriver shaft is replaced by the torque limiting screwdriver. Tightening of the screws should be stopped after a click is heard. The insertion sleeve is removed and the filled hole is marked with a plastic stopper. A screw is now inserted through hole 7 in the usual manner and the hole marked with a plastic stopper. A second distal screw is inserted through hole F and marked. The pull reduction instrument is removed and replaced with a locking screw. As the reduction device was only inserted monocortically, the far cortex must be drilled before the screw is introduced. In this case, self-tapping screws are used. 26 mm long self-drilling screws are an alternative for monocortical treatment where there is good quality bone. The LCP plate holes in the shaft also allow insertion of cortex screws. However, as the aiming arm only permits the insertion of locking screws, the aiming arm must be removed and the cortex screw inserted in the usual manner. Two bicortical and one monocortical screw will be placed in the femoral shaft. In osteoporotic bone, more screws can be used. However, the fracture must be bridged, so at least two plate holes must be left free. Before introducing the next distal screw, the provisional K wire that secured the reduction is removed to avoid any interference during screw insertion. There may be some instability when the proximal end of the insertion guide is used for screw insertion. In this exercise, the last proximal screw will be inserted freehand, so the insertion guide is removed. The distal stabilization bolt is loosened. The K wire and the stabilization bolt are removed. The proximal stabilization bolt is also removed. The insertion guide is now removed, leaving the K wire in place as a guide for the stabilization bolt. The stabilization bolt is slid over the K wire and locked into the plate. The K wire is removed. The screw hole is prepared in the usual manner. The screw is inserted using the torque limiting screwdriver. Distally, hole A is now filled with a locking screw, first under power. Then final tightening is done with the torque limiting screwdriver. The two remaining K wires are removed. It can be seen that the fracture is well reduced and that the plate is correctly placed on the bone. Depending on the length of the femoral shaft fragment, another screw can be inserted. This presentation has demonstrated the clinical indications for the distal femur plate, the surgical approach and the correct reduction of the fracture and the correct application of the plate using the LIS insertion guide.